When a government uh, declares martial law, as Trudeau has just done, it's hugely important, uh, and that's perhaps even for committed left-wingers, that the government is seen as uh, completely honest in the eyes of Canadians and indeed the entire world. You know, if a government dishonestly uh, declares martial law, it's clearly capable of getting up to uh, all sorts of criminal and murderous behaviour. Uh, history tells us this over and over again. Uh, so truth, trust, honesty and decency are absolutely paramount here. But everything about this criminal coup d'etat committed by Trudeau is actually the opposite of truth, honesty and decency. Uh, listen to Trudeau's uh, Minister of Public Safety, Marco uh, Mendacious Mendicino here. I'm concerned. I, I've heard some people say and still say that this is a, a protest about vaccines. It's not. Or that it's a protest about mandates. It is not. I've heard some people say still that this is a protest about freedom. Mr. Speaker, what is going on outside in the streets of Canada at our borders is most certainly not about freedom. Absolutely. I've seen many striking similarities in the way that these blockades have manifested across uh, the country. The tactics that they are using, the timing in which they are occurring, the targets, uh, whether they are national symbols um, like, this, uh, like, like the parliament here or provincial legislatures, like the war monument outside, where we hear members speak passionately about their forebearers who went and made the sacrifices for the freedoms that we now enjoy. The individuals outside are tearing down the barriers to attack those monuments. And that is indeed one of the reasons why, Mr. Speaker, that we have chosen, that we've had to invoke the Emergencies Act. And then compare it to the reality on the ground here. So here is lie number one, a glaring, overt lie used in order to impose martial law uh, on a once democratic Western nation, and it gets worse. Uh, Conservative MP, Canadian Conservative MP, Melissa Lantzman, uh, asked Trudeau uh, when and how he had lost his democratic way, and his reply was as chilling as it was dishonest. Uh, watch as he fans the flames of an unjustified national emergency. So, Mr. Speaker, when did the Prime Minister lose his way? When did it happen? You're right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. We will choose to stand with Canadians who deserve to be able to get to their jobs, who will be able to get their lives back. These illegal protests need to stop. Melissa Lantzman is Jewish, as Trudeau knows only too well. Uh, so unsurprisingly, she was shocked to be labelled as someone who stands with swastika waivers, uh, especially when the only swastika seen in a sea of Canadian flags uh, was very briefly on display uh, on the balcony of an expensive hotel frequented only by uh, expense accounts, politicians and politically funded state media uh, journalists stroke Pravda propagandists. But anyway, Melissa Lantzman uh, demanded an apology from Trudeau. Uh, watch. Thank you. Now we have a point of order, uh, the Honourable Member for Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I am a strong Jewish woman and a member of this House and a descendant of Holocaust survivors, and I have never made to, I've, it's never been singled out, and I have never been made to feel less, except for today, when the Prime Minister accused me of standing with swastikas. I think he owes me an apology, I'd like an apology, and I think he owes an apology to all members of this House. Yeah. 
Did Trudeau apologise? Uh, he did not. And even worse, he was no longer there to offer an apology, having already, uh, akin to Fraser, Frazier, uh, left the building. But lack of apology aside, the most important point here is that Trudeau is using a second lie, a second glaring overt lie, uh, to impose a dictatorship. Labelling the truckers as Nazis and fellow politicians as Nazis, uh, if they sympathise with the truckers, is obscene. You know, <laughs> what will he do next? Uh, set fire to the Reichstag and blame that on the truckers as well? Canada's in a very bad place right now. Martial law has been declared based not just on lies and dishonesty, but also on what appears to be the one overriding issue, which is that Trudeau appears driven by a genuine hatred of those who oppose his new world order view, uh, which means martial law has been declared based uh, not just on, on uh, lies, but on hatred, a, a genuine hatred coupled with lies used to deliberately intensify and justify the hatred. Now, this is banana republic territory. You know, Canada is now a genuine banana republic dictatorship, uh, albeit, I hope, a very temporary one. Uh, Trudeau's career, you'd have to think, is done for. Surely it's over. Uh, not this week or next week, admittedly, but he can't survive this descent into a, a genuinely criminal uh, dystopia for much longer. And he can't enforce a dictatorship, because this is what it is, but he can't enforce it in the long run uh, without gulags or, or concentration camps, rubber truncheons and torture. He can't. Uh, but elitist, privileged, spoiled, fantasist Trudeau, who's like an overgrown boy drunk on power, uh, he's too deranged to understand this one simple fact. Thankfully for all of us, though, He'll soon be a footnote in history, uh, assuming gulags are not just around the corner. You know, it uh, comes down to events, dear boy, events and all of that. You know, gulags are still improbable in Canada, but at this stage they are not 100% impossible. The one thing that is possible right now is a genuine dictatorship based on lies and hatred of a group of people. That's where we are right now. Well, that's where Canada is right now. And as Trudeau himself might say, this has to stop. I did that without the lisp. <laughs>